front of the altar that he has had built outside of the temple, in front of the temple. Why is that significant? Because Solomon was king. There was none greater than him in the land. He said something and it came to pass. He told somebody to do something and they did it. And even though Solomon was king, he still knew his place. Everybody got a place. Do you know your place? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all trying to shut me off already, but you better open up. The king knew his place. He stood outside of the temple, in front of the temple, the temple that he built. With all of the money that he gathered, he understood that it wasn't his accomplishment. It was God's. Solomon understood that before he even came into existence, his father desired to build this temple with his physical hands, and God said no. Not so much that David had sinned. Not so much that David was a man of war, even though that's the way we interpreted it. But the real reason David could not build the temple is because his son was purposed for it. And in order for God to be properly worshipped and come to rest, it had to come to a completion. And David could not finish the temple in his years, and so his son had to be the one to build it. I study your Bible. And so he comes to the completion of this temple and he recognized that this was divine assignment from God. Restoration this building, as little as it may seem, as unfinished as it may seem, this has been a divine assignment of God. And we cannot take the dedication of the building lightly to God. And you know at dedication, there's fanfare, and we worry about how we gonna dress. And the first family, and we got our makeup done, and we try to figure out what to wear. And behind the scenes, we try to make sure everything was in its right place. The Bible was set properly, and the cup was set properly, and the communion things were set properly, and the right person walked out at the right time, and we walked out in the right step to the right song, and the right people were in the right place to walk in first and to walk in last. We wanted everything to be done properly because we were dedicating the temple, the house of God back to God. We were acknowledging that this is something that God has done. With every dime dollar that we have given, it still could not have been done without God. And if we didn't give it, somebody else would have gave it because it was a divine assignment given by God. Before we were even born, some of us, this assignment was set forth. Bishop Rochford looked at this building many years ago to buy this building and God told him no, he couldn't buy it. Just like he told David, you can't build it. And years later, our uh, overseer, Jermaine McGinnis Sr. becomes Bishop Rochford's spiritual son. And God tells him, this is the building you're going to buy. And he says, I don't have enough money. God said, but I promised it to your father. He couldn't buy it, but it was for you to buy. And so I need you to go in and complete a thing so it can be dedicated back to me. So it's dedication time. Again, the temple that David petitioned for, that he prepared for, that he pined for, but was purposed for his son Solomon, we find completed in the text. And Solomon first stands and then kneels before the altar and before the people in service, hoping that the Lord will bring peace and prosperity and his presence to the very idea of what they had done. He understood that if God showed up, purity and perfection and passion would show up with God. And that all the bricks that they laid would be nothing without the assurance and the reassurance that God was pleased. He understood that even though he was king, he still wasn't all in all. And he couldn't even enter the temple without the priest's uh, application. He understood that he first must pray. That before he could go behind the scenes, he must hit the incense, the altar of prayer. And so for dedication, we start with the prayer. And I want you to keep in mind that the prayer was repenting. It's a lot of different types of prayers. But the king, the one in charge, the one who had everything, he gave a repentant prayer. The prayer was repentant, the offering was burnt, and the fire was consuming. And for those of you who are still with me, those of you who have fallen off, go ahead and stay off. 
Uh huh. This for select people. Do what you gotta do. Fall asleep. Close your eyes. Do whatever you gotta do. But I know when the word comes from God. So you do what you gotta do. Uh huh. Go on and fall off. But the prayer was repentant. The offering was burnt. And the fire was consuming. Are you with me, Restoration? Yes, Let me give you a few things. The prayer was sincere and sacrificial. So many times we pray and all we do is ask God for stuff. You ever get tired of yourself asking God for stuff? We think God owe us something. I hear from sinners and from saints that God owe them something. Ain't he supposed to be a God of love? God is a God of love. Why he do that? But this prayer was repentant and sincere and sacrificial. It was the king. He didn't have to say anything he didn't want. Nobody was going to question him. And it was sacrificial. He stood at risk of exposing his vulnerability to the people. To show the people that I too must pray. What kind of leader would Jermaine McInnes be or Kawana McInnes be if we never showed you that we too have to repent and pray? If we always invited you to the altar but we never found the altar, what kind would we be? If you are a child and you're in this place, open up your eyes. I'm going to let the adults sleep if they want, but children, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Uh -huh, everybody else can fall asleep if they want. One that causes an about face to sin. That's the problem, Harry, with some of us saints. Because we think once we commit our life to God that we'll never see sin again. And whatever we do is all right with God. And we don't about face to sin. As a matter of fact, elder, we get indignant with anybody who point out our sin. Because who are they to point out our sin? We, we perfect now. We confessed with our mouth. I've been saved for years. You can't tell me nothing. We don't want to answer to nobody. Unaccountable. Amen. But it's one that causes an about face to sin. I'm talking about a repentant prayer, something that Solomon gave the king. You wake up in the morning and you barely, my mother used to say, and I gotta say it. You can tape it if you want. You ain't got a pot to piss in. That's what she used to say. That means you real poor. Right. And you acting like God owe you something. Right. Somebody mad because I said piss. It's pee. <laughs> it's that stuff that come out after you eat. I hope it come out. Some of you, it don't come out. Nothing come out, and that's the problem. You're spiritually constipated. Say it. So good. You can't even receive the word I'm giving you because you can't put nothing else in your mouth. You keep regurgitating it. Because if it don't come out, it comes up. Yeah. So you keep spewing the word out of your mouth because you're spiritually constipated. You know all you've been, all you've been through, all you all that. You don't need nothing. You all that in a bag of chips. Soup, salad, and everything. On fast days, you fast when you want, and when you don't want, you eat your food, and you act indignant like, this is my life. You right. It's your life. Your life, right. Okay. All right. Jesus. One that causes an about face to sin. Some stuff you just need to stop doing. Stop this nonsense. You know you sinning. If you watching porn, you sinning. Stop it. Stop this nonsense. Don't the pastor got sin too? Yes. He repents. She repents. And we try to get it right. Y'all about to be mad. All your shows. You feed in your spirit. Amen. All these weighted shows. Say it firstly. You wondering why your life is so scandalous. All you do, you got scandal on, 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 on DVR. My God. And mad if you don't get to it. You living vicariously through Cookie on Empire. You get in here now, you trying to dress like her, you trying to wear your weaves like her. You want to be cookie. <laughs> Giving your cookie to everything. First lady. Acting like you married to a lion. <laughs> we are the bride of Christ. We got the line of Judah. And you trying to get a false idol to be your man, your God, your replacing your face with cookies. Scandal and empire. Some of y'all wishing y'all was Olivia Pope. She the scandalous hoe I ever seen. She is. Not Kerry Washington. 
She's playing a part. I don't know what Carrie Washington do. I don't know if she's saying, not saying, whatever. But Olivia Pope is scandalous. Scandalous. Sleeping with a married man. Making his wife submit. Then the wife become the friend. Mm -mm. He taking her in closets. She getting rid of both babies, a boy and them, acting like it's okay, it's a decision. All of the things they put in your mind as you're watching the show. The president don't love his wife. His wife was raped by his father. His child was really his brother. Scandal. Scandal. <laughs> no. There's enough scandal in the Bible. Right. David slept with Bathsheba. David had Bathsheba's husband killed. So he can take her for his own. You're trying to find another scandal. But at least David was a man after God's own heart. And had a son who knew how to be diligent in the work of the Lord. You think Fitz is real. Jesus. You having a fit. <laughs> Don't let me start with power. You ain't got no position in the church, so you go home and you flick on power. I'm getting it. Talk my prayer, repentant prayer. You got your back, first lady. Tell me, I ain't sitting. What you watch? Yeah, I've seen them before, but I ain't watching them now. You cannot feed that stuff to your spirit no. every week. No. And then you come in here and they singing, I'm chasing after you, and you like that. Right. And everybody ain't got to preach. Everybody ain't trying to meditate on the word. You just not interested. It ain't moving you. It ain't, you know, you just, you know, you just ain't moved by it. No, I love the word. I just don't like hearing it come from her. No, you don't love the word because I'm going to tell you, people that can't stand me, people who have done me wrong, people who have done all kinds of manner evil against me, get up and give the word, and I'll listen to the word and say, word say amen if the word is right. Amen. It ain't dumb as God. Right. Who, who cares? Right. Who cares if you like me or not? It, listen, if you die on the street and me and your blood and my blood match types, you want to live. Right. Amen. Listen here. Y'all better start with this stuff. Empower the wife sleeping with the driver. And y'all watch me. I'm just watching it because I think 50 Cent cute. We got 50 sitting in this church overseas. This church will be packed every week. God, send, get, send a celebrity or something. And save them real good. Good God Almighty. Y'all need to see somebody. My daughter keep talking about she marrying Kyrie. Praise God. No, she's serious, y'all. Y'all, she's dead serious. She's serious. She's trying to get her father to buy her floor tickets. She Praise watching God. on my... <laughs> Baby, it's closer to home than that. <laughs> oh, Lord, God bless her. Jesus. I'm trying to make you laugh through some of this cutting. It is one that is predicated on, watch this, y'all, self-examination. And a desperate determination to reconcile with God. One of the issues we have in the sanctified church right. is we don't generally do self-examination. Nope. We examine everybody else. You do. We do. We got something to say about everything somebody else is doing. But we can tell when we have not been at the altar ourselves. Repenting. Leaking oil. Like a woman running around that time of the month with no protection. Lord have mercy. You see it. You smell it. You're disgusted by it, mm -hmm. but she don't know. Nobody wants to tell her because they they're they afraid they're going to embarrass her. So people let you be embarrassed in your bloody sin. Yeah. Jesus. Terrible. Terrible. But a real family or friend going to let you know. Yeah. Baby, I see blood. Uh-huh. I see blood. Mm -hmm. And it's not the blood that's supposed to be in you. You need some protection. Yes. You need to be covered. And instead of covering one another, we go tell everybody else the sin we see on other people. 
Solomon is standing there with a repentant prayer, one of self-examination. I didn't go through the whole thing. I went through a lot. But if you read the chapters, he starts with praying repentance for, for Israel first. For himself. Lord, hear us. We about to now. You, you probably forgot he was there to dedicate the building. May he's starting with a repentant prayer. I know some of y'all wish I was hollering more. No, it's good. Yeah. It's good. One that sees, says, and surrenders. One that sees, says, and surrenders. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? You can fake for everybody else. Take the makeup off. Do you know, because men wear makeup now too. Oh, Lord have mercy. I can't even say women. Y'all see those things circulating on Facebook? Mm -hmm. And they show the before and after. And then it's like, is this fear for a man to see the woman with her makeup on and he don't see her to after the wedding without it? That's not fear. That's not I'm just leave it right there. That's not fear. You need full disclosure. Not the body, but the face. You need disclosure. No, that ain't fear. That ain't fear. That is not fear. To show up with your face looking smooth as ice and at wet at night, you look like you got chocolate chips on your face, that ain't fear. Be mad at me all you want. That's not honest. It's not. If you think he loves you because of you, take the makeup off. Let him see what he's really getting. I don't care, y'all man. That ain't fear. Cause he gonna have to love you without that makeup. And he talking about he looking at other people. Yeah, because he didn't know what you really look like. He need to see you at your worst to appreciate you at your best. Listen, I'll wear a wig one to one day and wear a short next, Camille. You gonna love me for who I am. You better let him know you got on a body magic. See what he say about it. At least, full disclosure in words. Y'all mad. We got to Those who not married yet, you better take their advice. Right, Tanya, they better take their advice now. Then you mad at him, he don't love me. You ain't tell him what you really look like. Tell him, baby, it's about four inches down. Now, it's about four inches down. Would you still love me? Like, for real. And the makeup I got on, it got me looking lighter, but I'm really a Nubian princess. Like, just stay right there. I'm going to go and take this off, and I'm going to come back. And let's see, we're going to go out to dinner with how I really look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take off the wig, too. You look so different. Yo, yo, the, 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 the guy friend called somebody and said, she cheating on you. They think she with somebody different. You need to repent. And the men, too. Come on now. The fake hairlines. Come on, the fake hairlines. She don't want to wake up wondering where her eyeliner went. All right. This is preaching. This is the word. This is how you're going to remember it. I'm giving you a chaser. You know, old comedy is based on reality. So I'm really telling the truth. I ain't lying up here. You coloring it in. And then you mad when you wake up and the sheets got all black on it. She's like, baby, what happened? She thinking it's her hair dying. You know when it's yours. you see when you look in the mirror if you see something say something that surrender to God you should take self-examination every day stop being judgmental of your friends and your relatives be judgmental of yourself you are toe up from the flow up I look in the mirror sometimes be like you know that mess is wrong go call that person right now don't text them you know you you out of order you were wrong call them back and say sorry I go in the room to Junior and say, Mommy, sorry, babe. I was wrong the way I spoke to you. Like, for real, right, Junior? Mommy, apologize. God will convict me so. He'd be like, yeah, that's your child. Now, sometimes to the kids, you ain't supposed to apologize. Amen. <laughs> that's a whole nother conference. But sometimes you just dead wrong. I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm so sorry, Junior. I apologize to Dejanae, too. She's older, so she take a little longer to forgive. 
Yeah. yeah. As we get older, we get a little more stubborn. It's harder for us to forgive. But do you realize that as we get older, it should be easier for us to forgive? Because we got so much garbage on us that God has forgiven us. Every day, God has forgiven us from something new. Amen. This church should be packed with people. If people really understood, we understand that none of us really are perfect. That's why we keep coming back. That's why we keep getting refills. That's why we all got to keep getting changed. That's why we keep getting gas in the car. And, and some of us got to get new paint jobs. Oh. See something, say something, and surrender. Don't just see it in yourself and say it to God, but you got to really surrender. Keep coming up to the altar every time we have a salvation call. You back up here. You already got saved. Come for the repentance of the situation that you did. Pinpoint it. Find out when you buried that dead thing. Unbury that thing and bring that sucker to the altar. And bring yourself while you're at it. You keep coming. I'm coming to the altar for my family. Come for you. Amen. How do you know that God don't want to be with you because of you? You've been blaming him for so long, you think it's him. How you know that girl don't want to do nothing for you is because of you? You've been so stubborn for so long, you think it's her. But a repentant prayer. Mother Teresa said, I used to think that prayer changes things. But now I know that prayer changes us and we change things. You heard that? John Bunyan echoes Gandhi and he proclaims, In prayer, it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. We need to put some of these up during altar conference. Amen. John Bunyan also said, prayer will make a man cease from sin, or sin will entice a man to cease from prayer. So which side of that are you standing on? Be honest with yourself. How often do you really pray? You ain't that tired that you could go to sleep during this worship. During this word. Jesus. You don't pray that much to where you got it together so much that you can tune out this word right here. Because I'm, I'm absorbing it even more. I don't absorb it every time I picked it up to study. I don't got convicted about something. So I don't care what you think about me. You are not that special nope. where you can go to sleep on this word this morning. Amen. And it is not because I want you to look at me. I got enough people paying attention. You need this word. You really do, because you jacked up. You need it. The reason I know you jacked up is because you don't want to hear it. You need this word. You need to be inoculated with yourself. Uh-huh, you get mad around everybody else. You come around people, you snotty, you nasty. Y'all know we change like the wind. But imagine you being in a room with you, a hundred of you for one day, for five minutes. Could you really stand you? You giving you all the attitude. Could you stand to be in a room with you for five minutes? No. One hundred of you? No. Giving you all of the sass you give to everybody else? Giving you the hallelujah you give to everybody Hallelujah. <laughs> giving you the looks you give to everybody else? Could you take you? You need more prayer. Amen. Gandhi says prayer is not asking. Hmm. Well, well, how is that? Because America... Always says prayer is asking. It is a longing of the soul. It is daily yes. admission of one's weaknesses. There go the problem right there. Right. You get to a job interview, they ask you your strengths. You can talk all day. Right. <laughs> I'm talking about a repentant prayer. They ask you now. They try to get politically correct. Uh, 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 what are your areas of improvement? Yep. What they're saying is, what are your weaknesses? Yep. Right. And how do you handle your weaknesses? And y'all know, y'all think about that thing all day. Y'all try to go with one of them fancy answers. Right. You got some of those people who be like, well, I don't have any weaknesses. You're not going to get that job. You're not. The man that says he has no sin is a liar, the Bible says. And you sitting there and say, but if I tell them my real weakness, no. No, they want to know your real weakness. They want to know that you know your real weakness. Because how can you work on something you don't know is there? That's good. Yeah, man. That's good. We're so perfect. That's why don't nobody want to be around you. My God. Uh-huh. And you can't say some of y'all like, and don't nobody want to be around you, Pastor Kwana. Some people don't want to be around me. I'm working on that daily. You can't be by yourself all the time. You know, Terrence, because I'm a preacher and because I'm a counselor, when I try to give advice, when people ask for advice, they throw it back at me like, well, you do this. Well, then why did you come to me? Right. Every physician has a call. <laughs> See, I know the where to go to to get some help. My pastor in back of me, he gives real good advice. 
He cuts me and slices me open real good. And then he knows how to sew me back up and, and help me heal before I get to y'all so that I'm not leaking. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good pastor. Chuck Smith said the most important thing about a born again Christian, because you gotta make it plain, y'all. The uh, most important thing that a born again Christian can do is pray. Yep. Arthur Tabin Pearson says there has never been a spiritual awakening in any country or locality that did not begin in united prayer. Now, I don't just read y'all these quotes so y'all can say, oh, they, oh, 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 that sound good, that sound good. Y'all gotta really listen. There's never been a spiritual awakening in any country without united prayer, he says. There is no country that needs more of a spiritual awakening than America. Yes. The United States of America is the most ununited place ever. Yes. Now they would tell, they would say that that's treason. It's so ununited here, and it's getting bad. Let me just give you a few hints of what an unrepentant prayer can do. It can cause God to bring His judgment. For an example, He would take means that we don't understand to release things that we can't handle. Mm. Allowing Trump to take the president's seat, and he's—I told y'all he's just a puppet. There are people we haven't seen yet that want him in office so that their agenda could be done. And there, there is something else going on, and this is prophetic, but there is something else, obviously and I spoke about it, he even mentioned it to me. There is something else going on that we currently have no knowledge of. We haven't put the pieces together yet. That's what Trump's distraction is about. But Trump as a distraction is not just a distraction. Uh, it's a dismemberment. It's to cause divisions. And it's also to cause a connection. Trump released a few things when he got in office. Trump got in office. We're not the only church that had gotten property. Other people are getting property and stuff. Property has been released. They said the market is getting better. He deals with real estate. He's in a government official. He's God placed. I know y'all don't want to believe that. Uh-huh. Yeah, he is. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Lucifer was created by God. Right. He's in office. We know he desecrates women. And now all these people are coming out who have been so abusive to women. Yeah, it's coming to the church. It's already here. It's already at the church. But here's the kicker. Overseer brought something to my prophetic mind that I didn't pick up on that he did. Not one of the people after Bill Cosby protested. Right. They were accused, dismissed, they apologized, and they're out of the scene. And all of the people that are being accused are in key positions of money and power. Y'all, see, y'all, I, I can't give a regular word like everybody else because that's not what God gave me. I'm telling you, we need a repentant prayer. Yes. This man was put in office, allowed to be there because something has been released. So Hillary wasn't gonna get in office. She was gonna be cut off. I told y'all before, if you wanna read it, you can read the paradigm. Her and her husband, Bill Clinton, is just like Ahab and Jezebel. Y'all mad at me. Their lives are parallel. The exact same things that happen in political history happens with them. And Jezebel ended up dying off. She could not. And so Hillary was not going to get into the presidency seat. Even though she wanted, she was coming close. She thought it was hers. As a matter of fact, she was assured it was hers. Right. She walked with an arrogance that said, it is mine. And all of the wonderful people who couldn't stand Trump was like, ah, Hillary. We got excited about Hillary because there was no other alternative, we thought. You know, because his stuff was showing, but hers don't show as easily. Hers is deeply rooted in spirituality. You know Hillary used to have seances at Camp David? Where she used to allow one of the former first ladies who passed to enter her body? This is in book, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Her and her husband. They made some promises to the other side. But God knows too. And they couldn't get in back in the White House. But the time was up. 
because Bill Clinton came in with a change, and I'm, I'm talking about a repentant prayer, and I'm gonna move on. He came in talking about change. Obama picked it back up and talked about change. Y'all mad, y'all mad, because I mentioned y'all Obama. Obama is not God. Not at all. He never said he was saved. As a matter of fact, he don't even believe in our God. No, okay, y'all mad, y'all mad, y'all mad. He don't believe in no distinctive God. He's political. He says what he has to say. Is he a good political man? Yes. Was he the first black president? Praise the Lord. We needed one. But but listen here. Stop acting like he's a pastor. Right. Y'all mad. I like what he did in office. Some of it. Some. But he also enhanced abortion. He also enhanced the rainbow. Uh -uh. Yeah, it wasn't the coalition. He also enhanced the agendas of everything that we as Christians are supposed to not stand for. Talk about a repentant prayer. And we just going on us minorities because we so excited because he black and so we forgot about everything else because we like God is dwelling in the dark cloud but we have built a place for the Lord and so we got excited because he has eloquent speech and I love the way he speak oh but don't get excited about eloquent speech right we were happy because he was a minority. If a black person got in, we know a Hispanic is going in soon. Amen. But you better look at the heart and not the skin. Yes. Yes. They use our color to get slaves in Africa. Yes. Slaves in black folk and slave black folk. Y'all mad at me. I ain't scared at the people that straightforward, but the ones you can't really see their skin, Trump don't scare me.
Repent. Let me get back to this. Y'all ain't getting on the list today because I ain't going to wear your patience. I want y'all to eat and stuff. I, I really just want y'all to remember, we're talking about the prayer. A repentant prayer. And then we go to the offering. I hear you, Lord. Y'all remember, we need a spiritual awakening. We need a spiritual awakening. I hear you, Lord. This country needs a spiritual awakening. I was telling you, they're going to take Trump off the scene when they get tired of him. I don't know if it's going to be about death. And you're not going to, what's coming after him is going to be worse. And God believe me if you're more. Stop making fun of this man and begin to pray for this country. It's not cute, this stuff. We need to pray for him, his family, because they're going to throw him away like a washcloth when they finish. He got money. You know, he ain't on it. He don't know everything, y'all. They don't, they don't tell. Y'all think the president know everything? Oh, y'all thought scandal was based on nothing. Right. The president don't run the country. Not at all. They been knew Obama was going to. I just told y'all that the Clintons are comparable to Ahab and Jezebel. It's already set. Who's going to run? Do your vote count? We need you to get out and vote and be seen voting. It counts on a different level. But who chooses the president? Them officials who are sitting in those seats. Those seats you think not important. The seats you're not paying attention to. The assembly people and the senators, the ones that come to our churches trying to get vote, votes. And because they came to our church, we all happy and we just know their names so we vote for them. You don't know what they stand for. You need a repentant prayer. And I'm starting to think officials shouldn't even take the pulpit half the time. That we need a podium at the bottom. We don't know what's on their life that they putting out. Right. We, we so want a connection so bad. So bad. The man better be happy he's standing next to us. Y'all mad. Y'all mad. One day, Bloomberg gonna pick up that book we gave him on Overseers and read it. And he gonna reach out for help Overseer. Amen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. This, this political stuff. We need a spiritual awakening. So that, that's, that's the prayer. The offering was burnt. The prayer was repentant. The offering was burnt. So the offering was burnt. It was one that was placed entirely on the altar. Let me explain to you about the burnt offering. The burnt offering was different from every other offering. Every other offering, the person who was given the offering, so if I, if I had something to give, if I was bringing um, a lamb, if I was bringing a bull, if I was bringing a pigeon, because there were three different levels of burnt offerings. If I was bringing one of those things, if it wasn't a burnt offering, I could take a portion of the meat for myself to eat and give a portion to the priest. And then what was left over would be burnt unto God, to dedicate it to God, to show him that we're giving an offering to you. This was different. This was a burnt offering. The entire animal, the entire offering was solely for God. So you couldn't take a piece of it. The priest couldn't take a piece of it. That means you couldn't take a piece, overseer couldn't take a piece, whatever it was. If it was $10, it all had to go to God. Not a tithe of it. He wanted the entire offering. That's a burnt offering. Which means when it was there on the altar, you could not try to reach in when fire hit it and take it out. Right. It had to be completely gone. My question to you is, when you do, if you, if you do, find yourself on the altar, are you moving away from the altar too quickly? That's so good. Are you moving too quickly? Burnt offering is one that is given completely and wholly to God. It's the supreme offering. But are you moving too quickly? Arthur Tabin Pearson said the supreme test of service is this. For whom am I doing this? This is what you got to ask yourself. Much that we call service to Christ is not such at all. Let me, let me, let me, let me read that again for all you indignant people. Much that we call service to Christ is not such at all. If we are doing this for Christ, we shall not care for human reward. Let me, wait, wait, wait. If we are doing this for Christ, 
We shall not care for human reward or even recognition. My God. Who are you doing this for? Are you really a burnt offering to God? Would you do what you're doing for free? You too scared to answer because you scared OC ain't gonna pay you. What we're doing, we would do for free, and we have. What you do for Christ, you gotta be willing to do for free. I didn't say you would always do it for free. I didn't even say you have to do it for free. I said you gotta be willing, sincerely, to do it for free. They mad at me. Missionary McInnes, they mad. Missionary Moody. Much that we call service to Christ is not such at all. That's what Pearson said. If we are doing it for Christ, then why do we care for human reward? I don't want nothing. Yeah, you do. You might not want the same thing somebody else do, but you want something. How do I know you want something? You mad when they forgot to call your name. Right. <laughs> I won't take no money from overseer. Everything I take, but you mad because we didn't call your name. And then, those of you who want money, when you, when you gonna give me my money? Wow. Because wow. <laughs> you know, man, don't work, you don't eat. Jesus. We do know. A lot of this stuff is not for Christ. Let's be honest, you doing it because you wanna live well. Amen. Don't be mad. A repentant prayer. The prayer, the offering. What you offer to God must be sincere or he's not going to accept it. Amen. Now, mind you, they're dedicated in the building, y'all. We're still in dedication mode. Three types of offering, the herd, the flock, or the dove. Three types. The herd, the flock, or the bird, which is the bull, the sheep, or the dove. This is the reason why they have three types of offering. This is why we have tiers of offering. This is where we get three tier, four tier, five tier from. We try to do things biblically based. Because everybody didn't make the same amount of money. Everybody wasn't in the same social and economic class. But God required the best of their class. So, if you didn't have a bull to offer, which was the highest class, then you had to offer a sheep or a goat. If you didn't have a sheep or a goat, then you can offer for a turtle dove. But everybody had to give an offering. Amen. And out of the offering, out of what you had, it had to be the best. Mm -hmm. So if you had 10 pair of socks and you was offering a pair of socks, it couldn't be the socks with the holes in it. Is this plain enough for you? Amen. I know y'all ain't shouting, but it's gonna set in. Wake up. You stay at the job for eight hours. Wake up. Amen. I ain't been here an hour yet. Wake up. I'm almost finished. Three tiers. So that's when we're asking you for tiers of offering. He's like, hey, I ain't paying for another offering. We got a tier for you. We understand every, some people are working, some people are not working, so there's a tier for And then we always put other. That's that good turtle that we, we added other. So if you ain't got the hundred dollars, the thousand dollars, they asking for a thousand dollars, but not from you. Right. You in the other. Why are you mad? You in the other. You gotta have an other. And if you don't have an other, an other is a penny. If you don't have an other, then you need to let us know so we can go into fervent prayer. As a matter of fact, I'll go into my fervent pocketbook to find you an other. And then we're going we gonna to pray that God can... No, I'm serious. You know why? Because no man should be without something. God leaves every man with something. Even the homeless person on the street is left with something. God leaves you with something. And some of us that know better should not come in the house of God without offering in every category. Time, talent, and treasure. That's good. And when you find yourself getting low, that's when you need to hit the altar again. Did I do what I was supposed to do? Was I a good steward with what you gave me, God? And I guarantee you, if you don't have what you said you need or what God required of you, it's because you spent it when God gave it to you. If you think back on what you really do, y'all don't think coffee every day add up. It adds up. It adds up. Now by the end of the week, you spend twenty-five dollars on coffee, and that's without a shot. We get the wigs tightened up, and natural hair products it cost a good penny. My God. 
to make my own. We talking about a burnt offering, a complete offering. A conference come up, you want a new outfit, and you don't have the sacrificial offering. Sacrificial offering is a hundred dollars, and you got a hundred dollars. But you want a new you want a new outfit. Man or female, male or female. And you go get your outfit and then say, well, I don't have it. And then you mad the entire conference. Oh you walking around with new clothes on, but you looking old and tired. Because you mad. Because wow. when it's offering time, you feel compromised. Mm -hmm. And you acting like it's me and overseer. They keep asking for too much money. How can anybody ask for too much of anything? It's required of you to know what to give. Right. If you hear the voice of the Lord hearkening to his voice, we don't beat anybody over the head for anything. Not at all. Will I ask? Will I petition? Will I say if it's the Lord? Yes, it is. And if it wasn't the Lord and I said it was the Lord, God will deal with me. Stop spending your stuff on other stuff and then act like you ain't got nothing for God. And then let's get off of the money because all they do is talk about money. Let me tell you what restoration right now is lacking. Time. I can count on my fingers the people who want to put time in this ministry. Amen. Oh, it's back to the altar, y'all. Yeah. We need to repent and pray, pray, and we need a burnt offering. We are at the stage in ministry when time is more valuable than money. Y'all don't believe that. Yeah. It is. God gonna give money from every which you wear. I see spiritually money coming in, and it's landing. It's hovering. It used to hover up here. And now it's hovering right here, which means it's about to hit ground. I see it. It's coming from everywhere. I don't know how God is doing it over here, but hundreds of thousands of dollars about to put in our personal hand. I'm telling you, I really do. I, I know what I see, and I know when I hear God, and I know when it's close. But time, where are you on Wednesday nights? Over here drives from PA, from Pennsylvania. Sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours, to come and teach you for an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And it's a tiny section of people that's here because you're too busy. Because he ain't got nothing to do. He just prepared a word all week from Wednesday to Wednesday. Not talking about the word he prepared on Sunday to Sunday. But you find that you are too busy to make it here. What happened to the day when 